In this video, we're going to start to take a look at arithmetic instructions and taking a look at a special register known as the E flags register, which is often used with arithmetic operations and as well other operations that we'll see as we continue on with learning x86 assembly. So generally, the main idea here is we're going to take a look at the add operation and take a look at a few different cases that we have for add and take a look at how it affects things like the E flags register. So starting off, let's do a very simple example of adding two numbers together. The first thing we need to do is we need to put two numbers into two different registers. So we'll put a value in EAX and a value in EBX. Doesn't matter what these values are right now, I'm just picking simple small numbers. And then we're gonna do an add operation. So the actual instruction is add. We give it the register that we want to be the destination and the register that we want to be the source. What's going to happen with this operation is it's going to take the value in EAX, it's going to add it to the value in EBX, and then it's going to store the result in the destination, which is EAX in this case. So the result of this operation should be that we see the result of adding these two numbers together stored in EAX. So EAX should currently have a value of 3. To verify this, we can go ahead and run this and see exactly what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to assemble and link the file together and we're going to run it in GDB. I'm going to change the layout to ASM. I'll break at start and we'll run. And let's step through each of these instructions. And to verify this, what we're just going to say is we're going to say info register EAX. And as you can see, EAX currently has a value of three, which is exactly what we expected. It's just the result of adding together EAX and EBX. Now, in addition to these registers being changed, there's another register that we need to know about known as the E-flags register. The E-flags register is a set of bits that has each bit representing a specific flag. And that flag gives us information about the operation that was just run. So in this case, it's giving us information about the add operation. And you can see here in the brace brackets or um, rectangular brackets here, there's two different flags that it shows as being set, PF and IF. So that's one way of seeing what flags were set. The other way is we could take a look at the actual value and determine which bits were set to one and which bits were set to zero. The bits that were set to one would tell us that those flags are turned on. Otherwise, if they're set to zero, those flags are not currently active. But really the easiest way is to read the short form on the right hand side. It's a bit harder to you know, decode and determine which bit represents which flag in this type of idea. Generally, when you look at this, you want to be able to interpret what it means that these flags have been turned on. So the PF flag is the parity flag, for instance. The parity flag is set when the value that resulted from an operation is an odd number, and it's set to zero if it's an even number. So if you think about the fact that we just added two numbers together, the result of that addition was three, which is an odd number. Since it's an odd number, the parity flag was set to one to tell us that the value was odd. The IF flag is an interrupt flag. It's typically set to one when we allow for interrupts to be done on our system. So you're very often going to see that interrupt flag being set. It actually wasn't set at all because of the add operation. It was likely set to one sort of from the beginning of execution of this program. So generally the parity flag is really the only one that we're looking at for this operation. So it tells us the, that the result of this was odd. Now, a question that you might have is, why would we really care about the parity of this operation? And there's a few different reasons. For one, oftentimes we do wanna know if a number is even or odd. That's a pretty common thing to do in a computer program is check if a value is even or check if a value is odd. So just from that perspective, being able to see that very quickly can be helpful. Another reason is that we often use even and odd values to be able to determine if there was any sort of error in typically data transfer. The reason why this is the case is because if a value flips a bit by accident, so say a zero flips to a one or a one flips to the zero, the parity of that value will change, right? It will, if it was odd, if it flips, it will become even. If it was even and it flips, it will become odd. So that change in parity can often indicate an issue in transmitting data, which is something that we often see it being used for as well. So I'm trying to give you a little bit of context around that. So this is a few different things that you may see inside of that E flags register. Now there are more explicitly useful things that we might see in this register when we do operations like addition. Let me show you another example of something where we could see some more interesting information in that register. Suppose that EAX has the following value. We'll put in eight ones 
And here, we'll just do 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, I'm not sure if I've introduced this notation yet in this series of videos. The 0B just says that the thing that follows is binary values. So this is a binary value, which is eight ones. And this is a binary value, which is just a single one in it. So this is just a way of being able to put binary into registers. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to change these from EAX and EBX to AL and BL. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to specifically only have eight bits or one byte available to me, because I want to show you what happens if I were to add these values together. So I want you to think about this for a little bit. Consider what's going to happen if you add these two numbers together and you only have eight bits available to you. I want you to stop and sort of think about that for a second. Consider what you think is going to happen with this. And now let's actually debug the program and see what does happen. Because it's actually a very interesting result. It's one that you may or may not expect depending on how much experience you do have with assembly program. So let's take a look at the layout of ASM. We're gonna break at start. We're going to run and we're going to step through these instructions. After this add happens, what is the value inside of AL? It's zero. Now you might ask, okay, well maybe the value in EAX is set, but it's also zero. And that might seem really weird. We just added essentially two Fs and hex to one and the result of that shouldn't have been zero. So what exactly is happening here? Well, I can explain this just by writing out exactly what's happening. So let me, let me just write this out to show you. Inside of AL, you had this value, right? And inside of BL, you had this value here. Now consider if you were to add these together, you would get zero, carry the one, zero, carry the one, zero, carry the one. This pattern continues on and on and on and on. And at this point, we have eight bits, right? One byte of data, that's all zeros, but there was a carry of one that was left over. And this would go theoretically into the ninth bit, right? But there isn't a ninth bit in this scenario, right? We only have eight bits, so the one is not there. Now you might be asking, well, where does the one go? Because it wouldn't make sense for it to just disappear. And it actually doesn't just disappear. So what happens is, the one actually goes into the E flags register. So if we take a look at E flags, you'll see here that you have this CF flag. CF is the carry flag. If it's set to one, there was a carry from the previous operation. And we saw that very clearly. There was this carry of one that didn't fit in the register. So it got put in this E flags register instead. You'll see here a few other flags that have been set. The parity flag got set. We see an AF flag, which is an auxiliary flag. The auxiliary flag is one that we don't typically use too much. It happens when there's a carry or borrow out of the third bit. It's typically used for BCD calculations. So it's not very common to use uh, in more modern assembly, but that's generally why it's usually set. And then the zero flag is set if the register that results from the operation is zero, which it is now, right? Because it's, it's currently set to zero and the carry is set in E flags. So that's all fine, but then how do we actually get the carry, right? What do we, how do we actually get the value out of the carry? And the answer to that is we use a different operation called ADC or add with carry. The way that this operation works is very similar to the add operation. It takes a destination, it adds a source to it, but then it also adds what's in the carry register of E flag to that destination as well. So you can think of it as like a plus one additional onto the register. So if I wanted to just get the carry, what I could do is I could continue on from the next eight bits in my register, which would be in AH, right? The high bits of the register. And what I could do is I can add to this zero. What's gonna happen is it's gonna take zero, it's gonna add it to AH, and then it's gonna add the carry bit to AH as well. So the result of that is that we just add the carry onto AH. That's all this instruction is doing. Now you could of course add together two registers and then also add the carry on as a result, right? That's something that you're able to do too. This is just a very simple example of doing this. So let me show you exactly what happens with this now. So now if we go ahead and we do our assemble and linking and we go into GDB and we load up our application, 
I'm gonna go into layout ASM. I'm gonna break at start. I'm gonna run. Now let's take a look. If we step into each of these, this addition happens, and then the ADC operation happens. Now, if I look at the info register AH, do you notice that AH is set to a one, right? So you could see here that that's set to a one. If I take a look at EAX, it's now set to 256. So if we took a look at AL, AL had a value of 255. That's the largest thing that we could store inside of that byte of data. BL had a value of one. If you add one to that, you would get 256. So do you see now that we actually get the full result of what we were expecting? So this is always a little bit tricky, right? Arithmetic is not quite as easy as we're typically used to when we work inside of you know, higher level languages. But it's very important to understand that context of what happens when we add two numbers together and the result is too big for that register. We end up with a carry and that carry gets set in E flags and we can use the ADC operation to add that carry onto our register. So that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.